Hugo Culture in action. We're building a lot of these at Jeff's property right now. I think we're building seven or something. First car was a 1980 Dodge Colt. Yeah. Hey everybody, in today's video, we are gonna be taking a trip down memory lane and reacting to my friend's channel, Bobblehead Homestead. When Jeff first started making YouTube videos, he actually used to do a reaction channel. And I don't know if you guys know this, but it's true. He used to make a video of the top 25 videos from the, from the week of like the homestead community. And he would do this all the time, 23 videos, 20 videos. He didn't show the whole video and react to it like I do. He would just show what was going on in the community, what everybody was working on. And it's really cool because, you know, this whole family thing that we have going on now it was all started by Jeff. It was Jeff putting this piece to this piece and introducing each other. And it's really crazy. I don't know if he did it on purpose, but it's funny to look back at these videos and realize he was building these communities from literally day one. From day one, he was doing this. So thank you, Jeff, for what you've built in this community. And I think it's really cool. The video we're going to be reacting to today is called Hugo Culture in Action. And the reason I picked this video is because, crazy enough, seven years after this video, Jeff's bought three properties in Arkansas. At this point, he's still living in Illinois. Moved to Arkansas. I moved to Arkansas. He goes through three properties, and on his third property, we're building Hugo Culture Mounds into his property. And I just thought, what a crazy loop that we're stuck in. <laughs> I had to react to it, so let's check it out. I should say, this is going to be probably a highlight of multiple videos, so I'm going to tag all the creators, if they're still around, in the links below. Hey folks, welcome to The Daily Dude. Today... <laughs> the Daily Dude, that's what he originally called it. Um, but let me tell you this, the reason I thought about doing this is the other day in a live stream, he said, if you go back six or seven years in his videos, that his beard was brown, and look at it, it is it is brown, just a little gray in there. Hugo culture in action, but first, a random fact about you. My best. At this time they were doing like, a, everybody was doing like a top 30 facts of random stuff, you know, just a little bit about you, it was like a little trend that was going on in the community. This friend growing up was my brother. We're still really close. I do have a video I can link. Um, where I let you guys meet my brother as well. He's just a really cool kid, and we've always just been really close. We were close in age. We had a lot of the same friends, and we just grew up together. So I love him to bits, and I think he likes me that much too. <laughs> That's Amanda from Freedom Acres, and you'll find a link to her 30 Random Facts and channel below, and she also just got a Berkey. Our first video comes from Paul Wheaton, the Duke of Permaculture himself, with an intro video on Hoogle culture. Paul Wheaton, I think he's somewhere up north, and he was uh, really into, um, like you see here, rocket mass heaters, just um, building with the materials that you have and bettering the, the land that you have stuff. I think there was a little controversy with him, but I think that he taught the YouTube world a lot of really good information. Hugo culture is wood buried in soil. As the years pass, the wood rots and acts like a sponge, becoming a source of water and nutrients for plants. There's many different ways that you can create a hugel culture, whether you're using large logs from cut down trees or just branches from backyard trees. Wood is one of the key ingredients to making a hugel culture work. The second clip came from Plant Abundance, another great channel with plenty of resources about hugel culture. Check them out below. Our next three, four, five videos come from Back to Reality, who is starting out and giving hugel culture a try. So we dragged in cartload after cartload and eventually filled the trench with as much wood as it would hold. Then we went after some smaller branches. We're building a lot of these at Jeff's property right now. I think we're building seven or something. The thing about it is it's, it's something that you start for in the future. You know, it's gonna take a while for those logs and stuff to break down, but they're gonna provide for a long time. It's like when you get fruit trees or something. 
they take years to produce. Like when you first buy a property, buy your trees then, put them where you want them, let them start. That way by the time you get your whole homestead built, you're already starting with a really good base of trees. And by the time, next thing you know, you're, you're producing your own peaches or apples or whatever, you know, it's, it's the right way to do it. This is a perfect example of why we're putting wood in our garden. As this little log decomposed, it's turning into rich nutrients for these plants that are now yep. growing directly in the wood itself. What a great That's example. Awesome. Soon, our vegetables will be growing in this too. And Jeff's property, like, it's a lot of clay. There's, there is some topsoil, was some topsoil on top before we took everything up. But anyway, below that is a lot of clay. So now he's going to start rebuilding that soil in those areas. And it's going to take a couple years, but it's going to be a very, very fertile area to grow. Some baby spinach. Got some Boston lettuce and some Swiss chard. Not bad for our first little harvest. That is Derek and Paula from Back to Reality up in Canada. They have just moved to their homestead like less than a year ago after living in a camper van and they set up a hugel culture bed as their first step into gardening. Since then they've added two more hugel nice. culture beds. They've added a few Ruth Stout method beds. Ruth Stout's method is um, like a, just like you see a pile of hay basically. And maybe it's a little more thorough than that, but I've grown potatoes in this, in this way. And me and Jeff had a challenge and Jeff destroyed me. And in their latest video, they have decided to do a Back to Eden garden. The series of videos below. Back to Eden is wood chips, I believe. Oh, and a few more on their website are a good watch if you're interested in hugel culture. The last video comes from Suburban Homestead, where he talks about some types of wood that we should avoid using in mulch and hugel culture. Wood for your hugel, I would keep away from any wood that has a proven allopathic um, substances. In my case, I would never put black walnut or pecan wood, which I actually have a pecan tree in my backyard. I never use that. Who gold culture? Um, yeah, we didn't have any of those trees. The only thing that we put in there that we probably shouldn't was some cedar, but I used it very limited amounts. And my thought was that it would help with aeration, you know, help um, in the future. But it, it just takes forever to break down. It's not very nutritious, I guess. but. Anyways, we didn't put a lot, just a little. Culture is another interesting option for people to grow food. If you have access to lots of wood and brush, that's a good option. If your ground is especially rocky, where you can't get a tiller and it, you can just build up over it or <laughs> dig the rocks out by hand as you're building a trench for Or a backhoe. For the hugel culture. Um, but the Paul Wheaton video and the plant abundance videos, those are kind of short introductions into the topic, and they are both very knowledgeable about that. Back to reality, I enjoyed because they're putting it into action, and we're yet to see all the results. It was, they got some good results their first year, a lot of zucchini and tomatoes and lettuces and spinach and squash and so it came out pretty good their first year now this is their second year they've added a few rows of a few more rows of hugel culture the root stout method on a few rows and now they're doing a back to eden wood chip area so it'll be wood interesting chip, yep. to see those side by side and see what their experiences are so i would recommend you check out their channel if you're interested in Google culture and what it can do for you. That's the really cool thing is that you get to see it develop over years, you know, so um, the first couple years it might not be that good and then it's going to really move into the area where it's super fertile, it really holds water and uh, I'm excited this is the first one I've done, so. Let's see, random fact number 11, yesterday was I worked at McDonald's, well today is the results of that work at McDonald's. When you're 16, you want a car, oh, that's freedom. I know where this is going. And that's why I worked at McDonald's, so I could have a car and freedom. 
and my first car was a 1980 Dodge Colt. <laughs> Pause for the picture. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's that awesome. thing was like 600 bucks. It was wrecked. I've got a, a auto body shop owner in the family, so that can be helpful. And uh, still it was nice does. blue. It lasted me till my sophomore year of college. Put a lot of miles on that thing. Uh, I blew the clutch out twice. Near 16, 17, 18. Yeah, you're blowing a clutch out on a cheap car. Hey, it was a fun car. Lots of good stories with it. And that's it for today. Take care. Always use a wind filter. And that's it. Bye. It's funny because um, he used to always sign off that way. Always use a wind filter. And every time that I make a video and it's windy, which is unfortunately often, I think of Jeff every time. Always use a wind filter. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it was a little different. Uh, crazy trip down memory lane for me. And just shows you that we're in like some crazy loop like we're stuck in a loop or something because it's crazy how it all comes back you know but i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did maybe check out this video and come back tomorrow so we'll watch something else see you then